Well hello there conservation divers. I hope you have been well. Um, today I wanted to just take a moment and talk a little bit about something that we sometimes get questions about. Every once in a while I'll get an inquiry from somebody who's maybe going after funding, looking to write a proposal and trying to get other partners on that proposal and usually it mounts down to something like we want to get a lot of money to build a land-based um, aquaponics or mariculture system for corals and we're going to make these big tanks on land and then we're going to do a big micro fragmentation project and um, when i then ask them what is the value of this why do we need this in, in our region um, i kind of get like the electronic equivalent of somebody getting frustrated and storming out of the room. And the reason why I asked that question about this is I don't think that microfragmentation is something that's applicable in every region or in every situation. And so I want to talk today about a little bit about what is microfragmentation in the context of coral reef restoration and why it is that conservation divers not doing this um, and just, yeah, because we get questions, why aren't you guys doing my fragmentation? Why can't I learn it with you guys and that kind of stuff? And so just to let you know, we are aware of it. We do know about it. We want you to be aware of it and explain why we're not really doing it at the moment. Not to say that we won't ever do it at any of our centers. So the first thing we should do is talk a little bit about what is microfragmentation and how this technique is used and where it's important or where is it applicable. So microfragmentation is a technique that was published and developed by Dr. David Vaughn, who is at the Moat Marine Lab in Florida, and he published this first around 2014. And essentially what it is as a way to very quickly increase the amount of living coral tissue in a colony of coral so the first step is to get a donor coral. So you might have to get a coral from the reef and fragment it or pull the entire colony up. So already you're kind of extracting from the reef um, in this way. The second step is to use a uh, diamond bladed wet saw. So these are usually used for jewelry or tile cutting. And then you cut that fragment of coral into very small pieces um, with, with branching coils, it could be a few millimeters. Um, with the massive brain corals and the, the Montasteria cavernosa and others like that could be more than a centimeter in diameter, but a very small piece. You then remove any substrate from the back of that and then you glue it using C, uh, CA glue, super glue, onto a type of substrate, artificial substrate like a ceramic plug. So you can then take that donor coral, cut it up into hundreds or thousands of pieces, mount these onto these plugs, and then you grow them out into in your ex situ nurseries for a few months or a few years until they cover the entire plug. At that point you're ready to bring them out, back out into the ocean where you can plant them, um, secure them in close proximity to each other so that as they grow and develop they will reconnect together. They will recognize that those other corals around it are indeed the same DNA, it's themselves, they can combine back together. Now because corals are a colonial organism and the entire colony originally came from one polyp, when a coral colony becomes divided or separated due to partial mortality, if it's allowed to grow back and, and, and meet up again, it will actually fuse back together. And Dr. David Vaughn calls this re-skinning. Um, but we've known this for a long time um, in, in the coral sciences and you know in our program, the Conservation Diver Program at New Heaven Reef Conservation. Um, we've done this for a while. You know, if we are working with corals and they 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 break apart, they fragment asexually while we're handling and while we're doing stuff in the nursery. We'll always plant those near each other because as they grow, they will refuse back together to create a larger colony. Now, what David Vaughn, what his uh, advancement in this field was, was to not only just work with larger colonies that have broken apart accidentally or, or on purpose, but to actually cut the corals very small. This microfragmentation, and what this does is when the coral is cut, it 
stimulates, it catalyzes a type of um, defense or regrowth mechanism within the coral, so the coral grows faster in that area to repair the tissue that was damaged or lost. But also if you think about the geometry of it, you know, if you have a large coral that is uh, growing just on the perimeter, if you were to cut it up, then you increase the uh, relative surface area of the perimeter to the actual area of the coral. So in a geometric way, this also um, increases the growth rate of the coral, just not even through a biological, but just through pure ge math and geometry. So through this process, he's able to get about 10 to 40 times faster growth of the coral colony in terms of tissue area, not in terms of skeleton necessarily, but in terms of tissue area, which is why he calls it reskinning. So a 10 to 40 times increase in growth is huge when you are working in the context of Moat Marine Lab, which is located in the Florida Coral Reef Track. Now, if you're unaware, the Florida Coral Reef Track has been, and, and throughout the Caribbean, has just been decimated. Um, by various disturbances um, all the way back since the 1970s and even previously but especially since the 1970s waves of disease and bleaching and other pollution dredging human impacts and other things um, has basically taken the, the what was the third largest barrier reef in the world and turned it into a more or less functionally extinct ecosystem and so for a lot of the corals that are present in the Caribbean are on the, the IUCN endangered species list, the, uh, the red list of endangered species, and a few of them are lo locally extirpated or functionally extinct. Um, corals like Dendogyrus cylindrica, cylindricus, um, those have been shown there's only about 51 colonies of that coral left in the Florida coral reef track. It's it won't be able to reproduce, it's functionally extinct. Um, there's other corals in other regions that are suffering the same fate. Basically, it's such a dire situation that we're working with only a handful of corals left in the Caribbean. You can literally count the number of corals of, of certain species that are left, and a lot of the species here are extirpated or endangered um, with extinction. And so this is really working in, in like a triage situation here in the Caribbean. And so in the Caribbean, microfragmentation is very beneficial because these corals that are suffering from disease um, and only you know, are, are, are reproductively isolated or are attacked so much that they become small enough that they can't reproduce sexually, in order to, to continue to have reproductive reefs and, and replenishment of the reefs, we need to increase that colony size in order that it can become reproductive sized again. Remember, corals reach reproductive size, not reproductive age. It's basically once they get big enough to have enough resources to invest into um, reproduction. This works, one, to increase the amount of coral that we have on the reef by about 10 to 40 times faster than it would normally reoccur. Um, but it also allows us to make corals reach a reproductive size faster in order that we can allow for the sexual propagation of corals, which is really what increases the genetic diversity and really replenishes the reef and increases the resilience of the reef towards future threats. So microfragmentation is an important technique throughout the Florida Reef Track and the Caribbean, and one that you will see more and more and being used in a variety of ways. Um, and so we do see the value at that, However, we're not using it at conservation diver centers because of our unique situation. So conservation diver is primarily based in the Indo-Pacific. And in the Indo-Pacific is not in the same triage type situation that um, reef managers in the Caribbean and Florida are facing. Although we do have disease and bleaching and the same threats as they do in the Caribbean, our populations of reef building corals haven't been decimated to the same degree. So rather than focusing on purely increasing the abundance in a sort of last ditch effort, what we are focused on is increasing the genetic diversity of corals because we're focused on restoring for resilience. 
And so our goal is not to asexually reproduce corals, not to fragment corals, but to use spawning and sexual propagation of corals to create our feedstocks for restorations, thereby giving us a higher rate of diversity, which allows us to buffer against not only the threats that we're seeing right now, but also against future threats that we are unaware of currently. So there are several reasons that make microfragmentation not applicable to local reef managers. Um, and the first of those is the use of ex situ tanks on land. Ex situ tanks are costly, um, but they also require a lot of supportive infrastructure. You need lights, you need pumps, um, you need monitoring systems to monitor the water chemistry, uh, to dose calcium and magnesium, and all these types of sophisticated microprocessors and things that go into it, and all of these have one major fault fail point, and that's electricity. Um, in many of the locations we work, we get weekly power outages. And so in order to have tanks on land, we'd need to have backup generators or solar panels and batteries. This greatly increases the cost and the time investment. A lot of our program managers are dive school owners, they're um, local resort owners and things like that, and they can't necessarily ded dedicate their some, themselves 24-7 to maintaining and looking after these tanks. Um, the tanks involves a lot more risk management. Um, when we do our, our nurseries underwater, we don't have to monitor very much there. We can go once a week, once a month, and, and clean them off and check for predators and stuff. When you have tanks on land, um, there's a much higher risk there of having some type of overheating, underheating, chemistry event, power outage, or any other number of things that can go wrong with that. Microfragmentation also requires a bit more expertise. Um, when you're microfragging corals, it's very common to also dip them in uh, revive or antibiotics, different ways to clean the corals and prevent infections or pathogens. And so this is another step that uh, if we work with the ocean and work with sexual propagals um, spawning, then we don't have to worry about all these uh, medications, antibiotics, and revive and these types of things. It also requires a much more manpower, uh, more cost, more manpower, more expertise, more risk. And so at the end of the day, it's just not worth it for many of our programs to invest in this type of infrastructure. Now I have heard that um, Fragments of Hope, I think down in Belize, have one of the saws that they use for mi microfragmentation on a boat, and I'm not exactly sure how they do that, utilize that, but they might be able to remove the tank step, the ex situ nursery step, um, but I don't know enough about that. So while microfragmentation does have its place in coral restoration, while we are focusing on the Indo-Pacific, there's just really not the need for microfragmentation. Um, the, the time and energy and money that would be invested into it could be much better used for a spawning program or for a program that uh, uses coral nurseries um, to rescue and regrow out corals of opportunity, those naturally fragmented and threatened corals. Um, it's just a, a much easier way to go. This isn't to say that conservation diver will never be involved in microfragmentation. If there is a need for it, then we'll do it. Um, it's just another tool on our belt. Um, and like any tool, you use it when it's called for. And at the moment, microfragmentation is not called for in any of our programs. So I hope that clears some stuff up. Uh, thank you guys very much for listening. Please keep sending your questions if you have them, and we'll do our best to answer them. We really appreciate you guys.